your plug. Sorry about that, John. <laughs> okay. And uh, so he came over to our club, gave a presentation about your club. So he said, well, it turned out they're playing here. Yeah. Um, actually, I think I have a personal connection with this group. So let me just check. Did you guys have field day at the UVA Visitor Center about five years ago? Okay. Well, then, yeah. Yes. All right. So my wife was heard about you all. She came over and came to your field day, and you all got her on GOTA and got her started, and she got her license. Yeah. And I had to get my license. <laughs> and that started the technician. So then she got her general. So I guess who had to get his general, right? And then of course you had to get her extra. So I had to get my extra. So that's how it started. And this club's responsible for that whole train of events. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna talk about uh, the Valley Amateur Radio Association, Vera. So you're basically a member from Stanton, Waynesville, and Augusta County, which is a pretty large area. Um, there's another group called Mara, and that's another area uh amateur radio club and they're further north and i'm a member of that that group as well but we're kind of sisters and i'll talk a little bit about that give you a little history so we go back a ways um in 1976 they had their first meeting and i'm not going to go through all the details there but we had 36 members uh in the first year and that, they met in october so it's not bad 36 members by the end of the year and then another 20 more in the next year. So the club grew pretty quickly and has been pretty active ever since. Uh, we incorporated in 2018 and with the six initial board members. And in 1987, we split. The reason was there was a bunch of members who were further north and it was a long drive down. So we split into two groups. So the Mara group is the northern group and we're the southern group. And we have members still come to both meetings. And so, and we work together. In fact, I'm actually gonna help them put up an antenna uh, Friday, so. We're all good friends. Um, our call sign is W4XD. You might see us on field day and other type of meetings, um, different nets. And that goes back to Joe Mumal. He was a very active initial member. And he, uh, he, he wished was, his wish was the call sign would be adopted by the club. So he donated his call sign and we had that as a trustee. And we use that for a field day and other club activities. Interrupt me if you have any questions. Okay, so we meet the first Tuesday of each month at the Armstrong's restaurant. Uh, so we actually, we have a meal where we do fraternization and then we start the meeting. And we've been going back and forth. Do we do that or do we do it like you? But I like to eat, so we're doing it. <laughs> uh, 94 members so far. And, you know, just like you, we're open to any and all members. And, you know, if you want to become a, a ham radio operator, you're, you're welcome. If you don't, you're still welcome. So, and our dues are only $15 a year. What are your dues? Free money. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I knew better than ask you. <laughs> and I just met you. How many do you do? 20. 20. 25. We have different levels of membership. Okay. <laughs> we got individual, family, and uh, life. Would like honorary. Honorary. Grand Puba. Who's Grand Puba? You're not allowed to say the name. Okay. <laughs> you shall not be named. It's a tough crowd, isn't it? <laughs> well, once I met him, yeah, I knew what it would be like. Okay, here's the current club rosters. Uh, you can see Dave's uh, board member at large. I'm the president. Uh, you may know John Lasher. He's the vice president. Uh, you actually may know Fred Costello. Does anybody know Fred? Yeah. Uh, the name really rings a bell. Seriously. Uh, He's in the uh, hospital net. Dave. Uh, you all participate in the hospital net? I totally recognize the call sign for sure.
All right. Uh, one of the things we do is uh, well, actually we just started it. I'll tell you a little amusing story. It's kind of embarrassing, but um, so we started the Seven Diamond Award, and this was for seven decades as a amateur radio operator. Gordon was the uh, the first recipient. So I was reviewing these slides for the club to make sure I got some of the details right. And then I put this slide up, and Gordon says, I never got that. <laughs> I'm saying, you got to be kidding me. How did I screw that up? Well, sure enough, I never printed it out. I never got it made. I never gave him the award. He found out by reviewing, might be reviewing my slide. Boy, I've already gone right under that table. <laughs> but he got the award next, uh, just last meeting. So. Oh. so that's something we just started. Anybody here have that many decades of service? Wow. See, now you guys got need to pick up the slack. Here. Um, this is so uh, stuff that's familiar to y'all. We have an Aries net that we do once a month, and uh, those members also participate in the Mar the Mara Aries net, which is every Monday. Uh, do you guys have any, an Aries net? I see you have an information on that. Do you have an Aries net? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, of course, members just like you participate in Windlink Wednesday and Windlink Thursdays and the Windlink Hospital Link um, and a lot of stuff I don't even have up there, I'm sure. Pretty active group. And now for Skyward, I don't have any here, right? Field day. All right, we've been doing this for a while. Um, I don't know how well you can read this here, but so I have data going back to 2010. I got off the website. So it's kind of interesting to see the participation. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you saw the same thing. You know, basically, they're pretty consistent. And we saw it really spike up during COVID. And what happened during COVID is we saw a lot of individuals in context because we didn't have field day in person. So they ran field day from home. So that's why we have the, uh, the individual um, thing. And most of those are phone. But you can see here that we, we had a pretty good uh, CW. Uh, we were most wins this year. When we ran here, CW continues to sell over uh, phone and uh, Dota. But that's just pretty good. But it's only digital. So, but the, the bonus points are mostly from Dota, and bonus points here were from the COVID season. So, uh, COVID was an interesting phenomenon here. And we kind of dropped down to 2022 and it went back up to 2023 and 2024 here. Yeah. Um, I don't think the numbers are officially in 2024. Yeah, not until December. December. So, that's as far back as I can go. So we run 3A uh, and then plus go. And we meet at the Rockingham Fairgrounds now. We used to go up on the mountain uh, and social campsite. And it probably took 45 minutes to an hour to get up there. It's a campground. So those who didn't want to camp, you know, and leave early because of you know, deer and all that. And then uh, let's, uh, let's move a little closer to town so we get more elected officials come in, the Boy Scouts to come in, get people off the street to come in. And we've been pretty successful in getting people to come in and get on go. Um, it's also it's a good thing we moved because we've had a couple of medical emergencies and in the hospital is 10 minutes away. They were in Stokesville and we had to get an ambulance out there. Who knows what would have happened? So I kind of just like carry the back on there. So um, we're on we're basically on Route 11, uh, just south of Harrisburg at the fairground. And that's worked out pretty good. The fairgrounds gives us uh, a pavilion, air conditioned pavilion, uh, where we meet, and then we have trailers for the uh, CW station, for the phone station, and the fire department gives us an inflatable tent that we put the uh, the FM station in, and we also put the uh, digital station in. So, an air conditioned tent. That's pretty cool. And, you know, it's just the fire department gives it to us. 
the uh, one happy, they also bring just this huge generator that's on wheels. They bring that in and that supplies. We got some work to do, Bob. Uh, <laughs> we got the chip for that. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it, it helps at the past president of NARA, he's a fire chief. So that's how we get that. So we're pretty low. Um, and uh, I think next year we're going to have two tents, two air ways, and if not have one of the trailers, because uh, the trailers are really hot. Um, interesting story about the generator. Um, so we have this big generator on wheels that is more than enough power any need to get a magnet. And of course, we want extension cords. So we ran extension cords to this inflatable tent that we had the other station. And one of the operators of the station uh, was difficult to walk. So he drove his vehicle on the tent. And around 10 o'clock at night, he decides that it's going to go home. Yeah, fair enough. Well, he drove out, ran over the cord, cord slipped up, caught underneath his car. So he took off, not knowing. All right, pulled it out of the generator, ripped it out of the station. He went 10 miles pulling <laughs> this 10 foot extension cord. Okay. And well, by the time we got the extension, we're doing nothing salvageable. We did just just move. But this guy, you know, some things just don't anticipate, you know, from a safety perspective. So next year, we're going to have to do something different for our extension cords and how we manage the. Uh, Generator. We also had somebody who plug something into the generator who wasn't all of us. And so we're going to have to make sure we count for that picture. Uh, there wasn't even a hand on the end. So, you know, this is stuff you learn as you go along. I'm sure you have your learning curves too. But, uh, you're learning a few things. Luckily, that was all. Nobody got hurt. Nobody ended up in the hospital. We did have a heat wash. Uh, we had both paramedics that came out while we were setting up, but it was really hot. Yeah. I wasn't paying attention. He just was over the dirt. Okay, they came in and they pulled him off, and then he just uh, sat around for a while, got dehydrated, and then went home. So we were lucky there. You know, these things you just don't think about. You got to, you know, you find all these technical things you worry about, and some of the practical things you know. Bringing, you know, learning experiences. All right, just like you all, and I heard you guys do quite a few of these things. We do a lot of public service events. Um, you can see Dave's his name up there three times, right? So he's pretty active as a uh, work coordinator. Right? Oh, work, excuse me. Right? So, um, we do a lot of things in West Virginia, and these are events where there's no cell phone service. So that's why we're active. So we provide radio communications uh, to net control, and if there's been a need for an ambulance or a first aid, or we have to bring somebody back in um, because the bike breaks down and they're just exhausted. Um, we're there to provide the radio contacts uh, in these areas, especially out in Mountain uh, Mount Mava. I mean, not down in West Virginia. There is no cell phone service anywhere out there. We're the only means of communication between the eventual coordinators and the drivers. That's, that's something we're very active with doing, and we have a lot of money. And uh, this is an interesting one the grind stuff. A bunch of nuts who <laughs> run through the mountains with headlamps on all night. We start at 6 p.m., I think it is, on a uh, Saturday, and then they run through the night to the next morning, running in the mountains. Okay. Anyway, this is not club sponsored, but it's a four o'clock. Are those the ones that started from Camp Shannon? No. Take this time set uh, there's a there's a group of runners that starts in Camp Shenandoah. I've been there with a dude out of the scouts. They're not fully with the scouts, but they run from Camp Shenandoah. 
It's usually it's in September, I want to say. Yeah. This one is uh, in so that that was BN, ABN. Third cocoa for cocoa plus you ever see it there. Yeah. Uh, and they want us to uh, basically ban the uh, station, the first day stations and the other stops for like eight hour stretches and we're even paying them to them. Giving the, the people who do it a hundred dollars a piece to the little run uh, the radios. That's not one of the things I do. Um, trying to know if I want to go to ride, that's something to see. Watching these guys wheel through down the mountains on their mountain bikes. I mean, that's maybe the other day, but I didn't want to say that. Um, but yeah, we're pretty busy. So this is our, our fun activity. What a lot of these guys go for these activities. And it's, you know, it's a uh, public service event because there's no cell phone service out there. This is the only way that the uh, event coordinators can be in contact with the people that are. And we bring SAG, we bring people in with SAG, SAG. We bring them, you know, somebody breaks down, their bikes break down. Most of us have bike racks in the back of our vehicles. That we, we can bring them into a first aid station or bring it back to the stop there. Um, I heard you guys do VE exams. We don't do training classes, which we probably should, but we just don't seem to have our act together there. But they, people will want to do it. Um, so the VE exams are actually hosted by Mara, that's an up group, but we have Vera uh, VEs who participate in proctoring the exams that I've won. Um, so they meet up in, in some of the proctoring and they did a test. So when's yours? It is in September. September. Oh, I got it. It was in the mat. It's set the first. What's that right? We have two coming up. One's in September, and one's in the end of the first year. The September one was the well, once, once a quarter. Once a quarter. Once a quarter. So we do it three, at least three times a year. Okay. Um, and one of the things that I have wanted to, to do for quite some time is try to coordinate examinations between Green County, Culpeper, your group, and and Mara, so that every month somewhere within those five there would be trying to get trying to get groups together to coordinate like that. Well, we're pretty locked in on the second Saturday. Um, so Yes. Work around that much great. We finally have a, a location. We used to do the meetings and also the VE examinations at the National Radio Astronomy Observatory, but uh, since COVID came in, uh, we haven't been able to meet there. But PVCC has treated us with open arms. We meet in this room, but we have examinations in a different room. So. So I saw I heard you have a, a technician training class. Do you do general as well? We have done general. We do technician more often than we do general. And just for a point of reference, it's the twenty first of September. Okay. So that's what the third Saturday then of the month? All right. So you do it every quarter or how do you pick a day? I think it's every quarter. Seems like it's about every quarter. Every quarter, it's every three months. Did I hear that? We're not happy, but you're not happy. <laughs> <laughs> He had an accident. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago or recently? Oh, recently. <laughs> okay, that's all I have. All right. <laughs> Good.